So thank you for having me here this morning. Um, I, as Meredith introduced, I'm Robert Innes, and my wife over here is Renee. And we run, as Meredith said, you took half of my presentation, by the way. <laughs> um, no. um, we consider Rinse Design a fairly, or slightly non-traditional design studio. Uh, we focus mostly on graphic design, but you'll find out in a few minutes that um, what I mean by non-traditional. We're also firm believers in the ability of design to alter a cultural landscape. And design is often viewed too narrowly as a tool of commerce or a way to sell things we don't really need. Alternatives have been around for decades and fortunately, Design for Good is becoming widely recognized as an integral part of society. It's seen as problem solving. It has the ability to connect people, ideas, communities, and cities. And it can create lasting, sustainable impact. But one of the questions is, how do you find designers that will engage, transform, and ignite social change? Easy but not exactly. <laughs> Though the movement has caught on around the world, Santa Fe has its own economy, history, and resilient character. That is, it likes to do things its own way. We found that nearly every month in the last 10 years of living here, adapting and cultivating relationships, that we still meet new designers that have been here just as long or longer than we have. One would think we have made it through the entire population by now, but the element of surprise is another great characteristic of Santa Fe. So after many years of getting together with other designers and all of us sitting around asking what else we can do, we decided to form a coalition and call it the Design Corps of Santa Fe. With over 30 members, and nine business leaders, who we call our ambassadors, that exemplify high standards of design and professional practice. They're all aligned as catalysts for progressive change and a force for social good in the community. It's a coalition that demonstrates expertise, inspires better business practices, supports and mentors students, young graduates, and peers, and the key component is the formation of stronger teams and partnerships that can tackle more systemic problems. It's a resource for Santa Fe, and it's a call to action for everyone looking to affect and shift uh, positive change. But before we can recognize what it is that's unique about this today, we need to examine the roots and debates of the past. Some of the key points and the key issues are sustainable livelihoods, ownership, technological progress, equity, and social responsibility. Design for good isn't new, and it isn't without its pitfalls. As Slavaj Zizek, a scholar, cultural critic, and philosopher points out, we can't continually create new terms and methods of going about our lives without missing what is truly important, and without missing what eternal questions communities have grappled with for decades and centuries. And by looking at artistic and cultural movements of the early 1900s, we see the thread of design for good. In 1909, F.T. Marinetti published his Challenge to Society the Manifesto of Futurism. It was a call to society at large to embrace the future, to exalt in the, as he quoted, punch and slap of entirely new forms. And certainly it held society's attention um, in later becoming a foundation for the fascists. Unfortunately, it read more as a manifesto on war and service to the state. But later in the 1920s, the Russian constructivists like El Lysitsky and Alexander Rodchenko helped enact a revolutionary avant-garde agenda. 
They transformed individual expression into a collective utopian vision, hoping to achieve a better, more just, and more egalitarian society. Rachenko's work as a painter and a graphic designer before turning, to, he, he was those things before he turned to photo montage and photography, often shooting people from odd angles and usually high or low to shock the viewer. And of course, after the, the, the war, Dadaists started rebelling against the horrors of war, the decadence of society, the shallow, blind faith in technological process. Bauhaus and Swiss modernism distanced designers from the revolutionary social ideas to design as a rational, quantifiable science. They positioned graphic design as a professional practice and supportive of corporate America. With the work of, of Herbert Beyer, Bradbury Thompson, and photographers Margaret Burke White and Walker Evans, much of the work is beautifully designed, as you can see in these spreads from the West Vaco books of the 1940s and 50s. As corporate power grew, designers like Beyer Thompson and Paul Rand, whose many logos we're probably very familiar with here, did a tremendous service to design by demonstrating its power to corporations. But they also distanced themselves from some of the critical questions of social change and corporate ethical responsibility. I don't know if Paul Rand <laughs> could have imagined the outcome or the present negative impact of this identity he created. But Culturally, designers began to question and look behind the scenes. Beautiful, evocative logos and slogans can't hide the faults brought on by irresponsible actions. And as abuses became more egregious, <coughs> designers began fighting back. <laughs> Even in, as far back as 1963, we have designers that recognized that those uh, designers within the advertising industry began seeking alternatives to simply selling stomach powders and striped toothpaste. This was Ken Garland uh, forming a, a coalition and a movement in Britain. This manifesto was published in 1963. There are plenty of precedents for expanding awareness. Critics began seeing the results of technological drive of progress and the bigger problems started getting attention. For those of you who don't know Pogo, this is Walt Kelly's creation. It's, um, and the, on the right is the poster for Earth Day that he created. So writers and creatives have always been sensitive to the disparity between idyllic images of life and the reality that humans actually face. As an example of the marriage in film and writing, this title sequence that I'm gonna show brought to light stories that writers had told but were still largely marginalized in society. So the movie Soylent Green was based on Harry Harrison's novel, Make Room, Make Room, about overpopulation.
2022, I don't think we're going to reach that target population, <laughs> but um, that was a, a title sequence that was produced in the early 70s. And if in 42 years, we're still faced with some of the same problems, some of the same concerns. But designers are particularly sensitive to how things move through our culture, how ideas are communicated, and how we can mobilize action. There are businesses that lead the way. IDO.org has a mission to bring human-centered design to the people who need it the most. Frog Design is one of the leading industrial design firms in the world, has shifted its focus to producing collective action toolkits that help facilitate change within communities. And going back to the first things first, as a revitalization, designers uh, pledge more of a Hippocratic oath, an ethical behavior. We have business leadership. Chris Hacker, who is the head of the Global Design Office of Johnson & Johnson, formulated 11 questions that needed to be answered whenever decisions were made of, of producing their products and how to move forward. So some of the issues you see there, quite clearly, do we really need it? <laughs> Is it made locally? Are the materials available in a less toxic form? We have architects that are creating platforms to drive positive change, challenging the status quo, and thinking wrong. Artists that have been trained as designers, raising awareness of a rising number of homelessness. Here, Brian Singer gathered scraps of cardboard, cross-stitched, framed them, and returned them to the streets to give passerbys reminders that cement is often a bed. In a similar service, the street store was created in 2014 as an open source project that provided all of the design materials needed to create pop-up stores. These designs or these components could then be used throughout the world um, to hang up along the street and, and gather donated clothes and shoes and so on so that the homeless can help themselves. It has since been done in 163 cities around the world. So Santa Fe has an amazing wealth of history intellectual capital and characters. And despite the many specializations, pushing and pulling of disciplines, we have design leaders who have recognized and pointed out. Victor Popinek was a professor at the uh, Pasadena School of, of Design. And he pointed out in his book, Design for the Real World, it is at the border between different techniques or disciplines that most new discoveries are made. It is the overlap of knowledge of those serving these issues that we have opportunity to design things better, or in other words, where there is friction, there is design opportunity. All the leadership and the examples I've shown have realized that the power to affect change comes from within the communities themselves. Tools and methods can be brought in, but as any good design process shows, the solutions or the end results come from the people, the culture, and the circumstances specific to the place. Design Core was cultivated out of years of designers getting together and wanting to do more. Its mission is twofold. Since launching in May of last year, we've hosted many co monthly coffee talks, there have been many months, and cocktail hours that provide mentoring and professional development. And as Meredith took the blank coaster, and as you've seen this morning, we have a traveling coaster project that gathers more questions, thoughts, and, and ideas, inspirations that then motivate the other and the, the subsequent events that we host. As well as providing networking with business leaders and our ambassadors, core coffees and core cocktails are all open to the public and create intentional overlap in the design, creative services, tech, business, and nonprofit communities. 
often sharing event times and creating more partnership opportunities. The second major component of Design Core is our vision series that seeks to promote Design Core as a think tank of creatives for which other organizations or coalitions can make use of. In addition to mentoring the young professionals and providing student portfolio reviews, we are engaging much broader community in constructive conversations. For example, we are offering Design Core teams to support coalitions around statewide social and cultural issues, such as environmental justice or health equity, helping them build websites, social media, and print campaigns that align and orient many separate organizations under one umbrella. We have joined in on workshops supporting SFAI by providing creative feedback and consultations to the fellows in their social entrepreneurship incubator program, the mouthful which they've condensed to SFAI Works. And we hope to create and launch this citizen science design project called Litter Nation. By collecting massive amounts of litter, photographing them in place with geotagging on, we can then post to a campaign website that amplifies the need for change. By working with communities, experts, nonprofits, and ordinary citizens, we hope to organize and tackle the systemic problem of litter and low recycling rates. We can do all of this because we found that design for good starts with design for community. It's about building, supporting, and cultivating what's already here. Thank you.